In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make this animation of text that appears to come into focus when a lens is moved in front of it. I'll be using Blender version 2.71. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the File menu, select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. Next, right-click on the cube to make sure that it's selected, and then delete it by pressing X. Now let's make a simple lens, and we'll do this by starting with a sphere. So press Shift-A and select Mesh, and then UV Sphere. Then change the number of segments to 128 to add more resolution to the sphere. You need to make sure that you set this value right after creating the sphere because you will not be able to do it later. Now press Tab to go into Edit Mode. Then press 5 on the number pad to switch to orthographic view, and press 1 on the number pad to switch to front view. I'll zoom in to see it better. Now press A once or twice until nothing is selected. To make it easier to select the vertices that we're interested in, switch to wireframe by pressing Z. Now we're ready to shape the lens. We're not going to be using the lens to focus light, and so the shape of the lens is not too important. We just want something that resembles a lens. So press B and drag a selection box around all the vertices above the center of the sphere. Then scale the selection along the Z axis by pressing S, then Z, then point 1, then Enter. Then grab the arrow and move the selection down. If you look at the grid lines in the background, you'll notice that I positioned the bottom of the selection one small grid division above the center. Now repeat this for the bottom of the sphere. So press A to deselect everything, then press B and select all the vertices below the center. Scale along the z-axis by pressing S, then Z, then point 1, then Enter. Then use the arrow and drag the selection up. Now press Tab to return to object mode, and press Z to switch from wireframe to solid. Then under the Tools tab on the left, click the Smooth button. Next, we're going to rotate the lens on the x-axis by 90 degrees. So press R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Now let's set the material for the lens. So click on the Material button, then click New. Then come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Then click the Use Nodes button. Set the surface type to Glass. If you don't see the glass shader, then you may need to scroll to bring it into view. Now I'm going to save what I have so far. So from the File menu, I'll select Save As. I'm going to name this Focus.Blend. Next, we're going to be adding some text, and so I'm going to hide the lens so that it won't be in the way. To do that, find the sphere in the outliner and click the button that looks like an eye. Now to add the text, Press Shift-A and select Text. Then rotate it on the x-axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. To edit the text, press Tab to enter edit mode. Now use the backspace key to delete the text and enter in your own text. Then press Tab to return to object mode. Next, let's add some thickness to the text. So click on the Object Data button. I'm going to use an extrude value of 0.1. I'm also going to bevel the edges by setting the bevel depth value to 0 0.02. Now let's scale up the size of the text by 2. So press S, then 2, then Enter. Next, let's set up the lighting. So press 3 on the number pad to switch to right side view and zoom out. Then right-click on the lamp to select it. Then press G for Grab Mode and drag the lamp over here to the left. If you look at the grid lines in the background, you'll notice that I positioned the lamp about four grid lines to the left of the text and about five grid lines above the bottom of the text. Now press 1 on the number pad to switch to front view. You'll notice that the lamp is positioned to the right side of the text. Next, click on the Object Data button if it's not already selected. Make sure the point lamp is selected, and then set the size to 3. Now click on the Use Nodes button and set the Strength value to 10,000. 
Now let's add a material to the text. So right click on it to select it. Then click on the material button and then click new. We're going to give the text a wood texture. So keep the diffuse surface type and click the little button on the right side of the color and select image texture. I have an image of a piece of wood that I'm going to be using. You can find a link to this image in the video description. To select the image, click the open button. Then navigate to the image and select it. To make the image appear on the text, we need to convert the text into a mesh and then UV unwrap it. To convert it to a mesh, press Alt-C and select Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text. I'm going to zoom in a little. To UV unwrap the text, start by pressing Tab to go into edit mode. Then press A once or twice until everything is selected. We're going to unwrap it based on the current view. So I'm going to position the view so that we're looking at the text from the top right side. I'm unwrapping it from the right side because when we render the final animation, we'll be viewing it from the left side. This will help the wood grain on top of the text to look like it's flowing in a more natural direction. We can see this after we unwrap it. So press U to unwrap, and select Project from View Bounds. Then press Tab to return to Object Mode. Now open the Viewport Shading menu and select Rendered so that we can see the wood grain. If you look at the wood grain on top of the text, you'll notice that it doesn't look very natural since it's lined up with the wood grain on the front of the text. But when I rotate the view so that I'm looking at the text from the other side, it looks much better. Now let's add some depth to the wood texture. To do that, Click the Screen Layout button and select Compositing. Then click the Shader Nodes button. This node represents the wood image, and I'm going to use the Color Output for the displacement. So add a connection from the Color Output to the Displacement Input. This will add some depth to the wood texture. Now click the Screen Layout button and select Default. Now the wood texture has some depth. Now let's add a floor for the text to sit on. So open the Viewport Shading menu and select Solid. Then press Shift-A and select Mesh and then Plane. Then scale it up in size by pressing S, then 100, then Enter. Then press 1 on the number pad to switch to front view and use the arrow to drag the floor to the bottom of the text. Next, we'll set the material for the floor, so click the New button. Keep the surface type set to Diffuse, and click here to set the color. If you want to use the same color that I'm using, then click the Hex button and enter 202020. Now let's make the lens visible again. So locate the sphere in the outliner and click the button that looks like an eye. Next, let's set up the camera view, so press 0 on the number pad. This is the view looking through the camera. I'll zoom in a little. Now I'm going to lock the camera to the view. To do that, press N to open the Properties panel and put a check mark next to Lock Camera to View. Then press N again to close the Properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. So now I'll set up the view that I want to use. Make sure that the edge of the floor is outside of the camera view. This is because a little later we're going to be making the background transparent and so we need to keep the background out of the camera view. Now I'm going to save what I have so far. Next, let's set up the animation for the lens. So press 1 on the number pad to switch to front view. The length of the animation is going to be 120 frames long, so set the end frame to 120. Then make sure that the frame number is set to 1. Now right click on the lens to select it and use the arrow to drag it up until the bottom of the lens is even with or a little above the bottom of the text. Then drag it to the right until the right edge of the lens is near the right edge of the text. Then press 3 on the number pad to switch to right side view and drag the lens in front of the text. Then press 1 on the number pad to switch back to front view. This is where we want the lens to be located at frame 1 of the animation. 
So move the cursor into the 3D window and press the I key. Then select Location Rotation. This will set a keyframe for frame 1. Now set the frame number to 50. Then move the lens until it's centered over the first letter of the text. Then press the I key and select Location Rotation. Now if I set the frame number to 1 and press the play button, you can see the lens move. Now set the frame to number 100 and let's position the lens right in front of the camera. To do that, we'll first position the lens at the same location and rotation as the camera, and then we'll move the lens in front of the camera. So rotate the view until you're looking at the side of the camera. Make sure that the lens is still selected, and then hold down the Shift key and right-click on the camera to add it to the selection. Now click on the Object button. Then hover the mouse over one of the location values and click the right mouse button. Then select Copy to Selected. This will move the lens to the camera. Now hover the mouse over one of the rotation values, click the right mouse button, and select Copy to Selected. This will rotate the lens to the same rotation as the camera. Now right click on the lens so that it will be the only object selected. Then press G for Grab Mode and drag the lens in front of the camera. Then press I and select Location Rotation. Now if I set the frame number to 1 and press the play button, you can see the lens move across the text and then to the camera. Now let's look at it through the camera. So press 0 on the number pad to switch to camera view. Now open the viewport shading menu and select Rendered. Then set the frame number to 1 and press the play button. I'm going to save what I have so far. Now go back to the Viewport Shading menu and select Solid. For this animation, we want everything that we see looking through the lens to be in focus and everything else to be blurry. So to get this effect, we'll be setting up two render layers. In one render layer, everything will be blurry. In the other render layer, only the lens will be visible and it will be in focus. Then we'll use the node editor to combine the two render layers. To set this up, start by clicking the Render Layers button. Blender has 20 layers that objects can be placed on. You can control which layers are displayed by pressing these Scene buttons. Currently, all of our objects are on Layer 1, and so we won't see anything on any of these other layers. The Scene buttons and the buttons down here do the same thing. Whatever change you make to any of these buttons will be displayed in both places. We can control how these layers are rendered by using the Layer, Exclude, and Mask Layer buttons. When all of these are set up, it defines a render layer which is shown here. We can have more than one render layer, and when we do that, each render layer has its own layer settings. We're going to be using two render layers. By default, we already have one render layer, and you can rename it by double-clicking on it. I'm going to use this render layer as my blurred layer, and so I'm going to name it Blur. For this render layer, I don't want the lens to be visible, but I do want its shadow to be visible. To set this up, let's start by moving the lens to another layer. So make sure that the lens is selected, and then press the M key. Then click on the button for Layer 2. We don't see the lens anymore because we're only displaying Layer 1. If I click on Layer 2, we can now see the lens. But we need to display both Layers 1 and 2, so hold down the Shift key and click Layer 1. Now to remove the lens and at the same time keep its shadow, click the first Layer button. Since the second Layer button is now off, but the corresponding Scene button is on, the objects in that layer will not be rendered, but they will still cast shadows. To see this, let's do a quick render. So click the Render button, and then click Render. The lens is not visible, but we can see its shadow right here. Next, let's set up the second Render Layer. So click the Render Layers button, and then click the Plus button to add another Render Layer. 
This render layer will only display the lens, and so I'm going to name it Lens. Now click the second layer button. Since the first layer button is now off, but the corresponding scene button is on, the text and floor will not be directly visible, but we will still be able to see them looking through the lens. To see this, let's do a quick render. So click the Render button, and then click Render. Since we now have two render layers, we now get two render results. This is the first one that we named Blur. Click here and select Lens to view the second one. As you can see, the text is not directly visible, but we can still see it looking through the lens. Next, we're going to remove this gray background so that only the lens will be visible. To do that, go down to the Film section and add a check mark next to Transparent. Now let's do a quick render again. This checkered pattern indicates that the background is now transparent. Now we're ready to combine our two render layers using the Node Editor. So from the Screen Layout menu, select Compositing. Make sure that the Compositing button is selected, and then add a check mark next to Use Nodes. I'll expand this area to give us more room to work. I can also close the Properties panel by pressing N. This is the Render Layers node, and it's currently outputting our Blur Render Layer. The Composite node is used for our final output. In order to see what we're doing better, let's add a Viewer node. So press Shift-A and select Output, and then Viewer. Press the left mouse button to drop it into place. Then add a check mark next to Backdrop. Now whatever we connect to the Viewer node's image input will be displayed in this background area. So let's connect the Render Layer's image output to the Viewer image input. If you want to zoom out on the background, then press V. You can zoom in by pressing Alt-V. Now let's add a blur filter to this Render Layer. So press Shift-A and select Filter, and then Blur. Then move it over the connection between the Render Layers node and the Viewer, and press the left mouse button to drop it into place. You can blur it along the X or the Y axis. I'm going to set both of these values to 20. Next, let's add a node for our other Render Layer. So press Shift-A and select Input, and then Render Layers. We're going to use this node for our render layer that has the lens, so click here and select Lens. I'll connect this node to the viewer so that we can see it in the background. Now we're going to combine the blurred render layer with the lens render layer. So press Shift-A and select Color, and then Alpha Over. This node will allow us to place our lens layer with the transparent background on top of the blurred layer. So connect the image output of the Lens Render Layer to the bottom image input. Then connect the image output of the Blur Filter to the top image input. Make sure the factor value is set to 1. To see what this looks like, connect the image output to the viewer. This image output is our final image, so also connect it to the image input of the Composite node. Now let's do a quick render to see what this looks like. So switch back to the default layout by clicking on the Screen Layout menu and select Default. Then click the Render button. We're currently viewing the Blur Render layer, so click here and select Composite to see our final image. Now we're ready to set up our render options. So come down here and open the Sampling section. This is where you can set the number of render samples. The larger this number is, the better the quality will be, but the longer it will take to render. I'm going to set the number of render samples to 50. Now click here to set the output file format. You basically have two options. You can choose a movie format or an image format. If you choose a movie format, then you will end up with a single movie file. If you choose an image format, then the animation will be rendered as a series of individual images. In our case, the animation is 120 frames long, so we would end up with 120 images. Then after rendering the individual images, 
Blender's Video Sequence Editor can be used to combine the images into a single movie file. If you choose a movie file type and the rendering process is interrupted before it's finished, then you'll need to restart the rendering process again from the beginning. If you choose an image file type and the rendering process is interrupted, then you can start again from where the process was interrupted. When I render an animation that's going to take a long time, I like to render it to individual images. So I'm going to select the PNG image format. Now come up to the output section. This is where you set the directory where your animation will be saved. On my computer, the contents of this default temp directory are deleted when Blender closes, so be sure and select a different directory. To do that, click on this button and select a directory. I have an empty directory named Result that I'm going to use. Next, save your project before rendering the animation. Now we're ready to render the animation, so click the Animation button. If you want to abort the rendering before it's finished, then press the Escape key. If for some reason the rendering is interrupted before it's finished, then you can restart it from where you left off by entering a new value for the start frame. So for example, if only the first 25 frames were rendered, then set the start frame to 26. Then click the Animation button again to continue. Since this is going to take a while to render, I'm going to pause the video until it's done. The animation is done rendering now, and this is the final frame. If you want to return to the 3D view, you can click this button and select 3D view. To view the animation, go to the Render menu and click on Play Rendered Animation, or you can press Ctrl F11. The animation will play through to the end and then start back at the beginning again. If you open up Windows Explorer or something equivalent and navigate to the directory where the images were saved, you can see the individual images that make up the animation. Now let's compile these images into a single movie file. So click here and select Video Sequence Editor. Then click Shift A and select Image. Then navigate to the directory where you saved the images. Then press the A key to select all of the images and click on the Add Image Strip button. Now open the Properties panel by pressing N. The animation is going to start at frame 1, so set the start frame value to 1. This purple bar represents the images. Next, go to the Output section and click here to set a movie file format. I'm going to use OGG Theora. Now go down to the Post Processing section and make sure that there is a check mark next to Sequencer. Now click the Animation button. This will be fast because we're not rendering the animation again. Instead, the images are being compiled into a single movie file. Your movie should now be in the directory that you specified. Now assuming that you have a video player that will play the movie format that you used, you can now play your new movie. I've set up this player to repeat the video in a loop so that it will keep playing. If you want to make changes to your project and then render the animation again as individual images, then remove the check mark next to Sequencer. Then change the file type. And then click the Animation button. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.